Hi, in this episode of Jesus 101, we're talking about being a Messiah follower at large. A relic of 20th century Christianity is the notion that following Jesus means one has to be in a traditional Western church meeting on Sunday morning. That church attendance is some kind of reliable proxy for spirituality and that the bulk of one's service to Jesus will be through a traditional Western church type of organization. There is a Redeemer, Jesus, God's own Son, precious Lamb of God, Messiah, Holy One. This model is fine for some believers who are blessed with a good church close by and whose callings to discipleship and service align well with that good local church. It's not my intent to disparage folks who find their discipleship needs and service calling a good match for the opportunities that are available in a local church. But traditionalists commit the dual sins of pride and disobeying the command to not go beyond what is written when they see themselves as superior to other believers who find more opportunities for meaningful discipleship outside the walls and organizational structures of the traditional Western church. In some cases, they may have nullified the word of God for the sake of their tradition. Examples are phrases with negative connotations like church hoppers and church shoppers as if fidelity to a given local congregation were highly correlated with fidelity to Jesus and faith and the faith revealed in Scripture. The notion that at-large Messiah followers need to get back in church reeks with pride and denial that Jesus is with his people wherever Two or more are gathered in his name. The job of ministries in God's church is to prepare God's people for works of service. It's not to get paid to do all the service or to determine which service is more meaningful and which service is not. Parents who raise their children to follow Jesus have fulfilled the great commission within their own families regardless of how often their children attend traditional Western church meetings. Jesus himself was a at-large follower of his Father in heaven. He was not more strongly connected to one local body than with others. Likewise, the Apostle Paul was not more strongly connected with one local body of believers than with others. Since the head of every man is Christ, rather than any human organization, it shouldn't be seen as unspiritual if men who follow Jesus don't long to be too closely connected with human organizations. Many Christ followers were disillusioned by the widespread church closures over the past couple years. Most churches seem to close over a combined fear of government and a fear of a purported pandemic, as if there were not pandemics in ancient Israel and Judah when God commanded gathering for regular festivals and corporate worship. Many churches obeyed Caesar and closed when the matters of church meeting and corporate worship belonged to God rather than to Caesar. Even beyond this, many churches ordered official small groups and similar discipleship efforts suspended or moved entirely online. On the whole, the quality of shepherding provided by traditional Western churches was greatly lacking during the COVID closures. As the organized Western church continues in decline, God is raising up unsanctioned and at-large ministries for the vital kingdom work that is being left undone by sanctioned organizations and traditional wineskins. 
the point here is not that Jesus followers don't need an inner circle of other believers. We certainly all do need an inner circle of other believers. The point here is the greater awakening that one's inner circle of believers can be constructed in many and various ways, and that God often provides for needs to be met in the body of Christ independently of identifiable local bodies and government-sanctioned organizations and activities. In the longer term, the more the government-sanctioned church refuses to repent and refuses to take on the risks necessary for the work to which they are called, the more God will continue to raise up unsanctioned and at-large ministry to prepare His people for works of service. Organizations who try to save their institutional lives by taking a course of action that's safer or has less risks will lose their institutional lives. Many of the largest contributors to progress and revival in church history come from at-large followers of the Messiah who have been willing to risk everything for the gospel. We don't make disciples for a human organization or for a denomination. We make disciples for the Lord Jesus, seeking to teach them to obey everything that Christ commanded and thus ensure the ongoing multiplication of God's kingdom through all the ebbs and flows of traditional Western churches and their culture. Jesus says, follow me. I don't remember him ever saying, follow those guys meeting in the building over there on Sunday mornings. Their traditional model of church organization and use of attendance as a barometer of faithfulness is neither sufficient nor is it necessary. Follow Jesus. Follow Jesus. The good life is the land where the big grapes grow, milk and honey flow. From the morning till the night, everybody's singing to Jesus. Yeah, the good life is the land where the big grapes grow, milk and honey flow. From the morning till the night, everybody's singing.